It is Thursday night, the 17th of January. Thanks again for tuning in to 28storms.com for another Cyclone update for the South Pacific and Australian region. We have several areas to discuss, so we're just going to dive right on into it, beginning with the latest outlooks from the Bureau of Meteorology. Starting in the Coral Sea, they say that there are currently no significant lows in the region, and none are expected to develop over the next three days. However, the monsoon trough currently extends across the Gulf of Carpentaria and far northern Queensland, and it is expected to extend eastwards over the northwest Coral Sea while deepening over the next few days. For the northern region, including the Gulf of Carpentaria, there are currently no significant tropical lows. However, the monsoon flow is strengthening through the Yarrafura Sea and the Gulf of Carpentaria. A low may develop within the monsoon trough in the Gulf from Friday and move east towards Queensland. This low has moderate potential for developing into a cyclone over the weekend, although it may move over land near the Cape York Peninsula before this can occur. Strengthening winds, rain, and squally conditions can be expected near and north of the monsoon trough over the next few days, and as we go into Saturday and Sunday, the cyclone potential is listed as moderate. For Western Australia, the monsoon over the tropics is likely to develop further over the next week and lead to enhanced rainfall over the Kimberley. A low may develop over land in the West Kimberley over the next three days, but it is expected to remain over land during the outlook period. Its potential for development will be monitored over coming days. Today's visible satellite animation reveals a strengthening monsoon trough with signs of a broad low trying to form out across the Gulf of Carpentaria. However, this low is still widely disorganized and proximity to land is going to slow the development process. It is still a question as to whether or not the low can organize enough into a Category 1 cyclone before crossing the Cape York Peninsula, but as already stated by the Bureau of Meteorology Outlook, you can still expect heavy rainfall and gusty winds. As a matter of fact, some of the local radar sites around the Gulf are already picking up on some isolated shower activity and the broad cyclonic rotation. As we switch back to the satellite imagery and turn to the water vapor sector, you can see that the upper level pattern is already in the process of changing. We no longer have the mid-level steering ridge over the Northern Territory. If anything, we are seeing more signs of an upper level low feature, and this upper level low is also helping to drag the monsoon trough more toward the south into the Gulf, which is going to be the main focus over the next three to four days, and we're also going to be monitoring the Kimberley coast. The main factor with the Kimberley development is going to be whether or not the low forms just offshore. If it does, then it seems like conditions will be very favorable for development, so we're going to have to be watching both of these areas very closely over the next week. The latest low-level vorticity charts do not reveal much action along the western Australian coastline, other than the fact that you can make out the monsoon trough, but nothing is overly organized. But you can see that things are a little more concentrated near the Gulf of Carpentaria and the top end region. So this is going to be the main focal point for tropical cyclone development over the next two to three days. As we take a look at the wind shear streamlines, things are a little bit messy. But as you turn on the color representation, the wind shear values have increased along the Cape York Peninsula a little bit more compared to this time yesterday. But we still have favorable shear values out across the western half of the Gulf. And overall, the wind shear values across the Coral Sea over the next 72 hours are going to steadily lessen because the moderate westerly winds that we see aloft are being enhanced by these two upper level lows. However, the upper level low over the Coral Sea is going to start moving more toward the southeast by the time the surface low starts to move into the Coral Sea, and also the upper level low over the Northern Territory is expected to diminish in strength. You can see this as we observe the latest upper level forecast from the GFS model. Beginning right now, you can see the upper level low and associated trough out across the Coral Sea. And you can also make out the upper level reflection of the low over the Northern Territory. As we go into 24 hours, the upper level low over the Northern Territory is no longer discernible as it falls apart. But the upper level trough over the Coral Sea is going to hang tough for the next 48 to 72 hours. But beyond that time, it's going to slide more toward New Caledonia and the remainder of the South Pacific, and therefore conditions across the Coral Sea may become more conducive for additional development. At the surface, although the GFS is a fairly reliable model, sometimes it can't handle convection, especially if convection is widespread, and it appears that the GFS is suffering from its typical convective feedback problems, and I will elaborate as we go deeper into the time period. You can see that the GFS is picking up on all of the favorable regions and convection, but it's probably going overboard in developing multiple tropical cyclones. As we go into the two and a half to three day period, we see a potential storm developing northwest of Fiji. We have a strengthening tropical cyclone over the Coral Sea. It leaves some energy behind to potentially develop as we go into 96 hours out across the Gulf of Carpentaria. 
And finally, as we go into day five, we see the Gulf Storm continuing to strengthen, the continuing development of the Coral Sea Tropical Cyclone, and more formation near the Kimberley Coast, despite that surface low still being inland, which is suspect in itself. But nevertheless, that surface low is expected to hug the Kimberley Coast and move toward the Pilbara, and by day eight, it is still a fairly robust low, despite still being primarily over land. So although the GFS, once again, is a good model, it is likely overdoing the amount of tropical cyclone formation that we will see over the next eight days. But it is still a good sign that we will have to pay attention to pretty much all of these lows within the monsoon trough, as this could still turn into a very active week. Although I do feel as though the GFS is going to be highly incorrect with its overall ideas for the weather near the Cape York Peninsula, it's still important to compare all of the varying model depictions. This is the GFS mid-level steering forecast, and as we've been talking about for the past two or three days now, the ridging out across southern Australia is going to steadily weaken. We're already starting to see that on the water vapor imagery, and as we go into 48 hours, you can see that the ridging is now fully displaced to the east and is centered primarily over the southern coral sea by 72 and 96 hours you can see the two distinct areas of low pressure one still over the gulf which i don't know if that's going to fully verify but the dominant low pressure center is still expected to swing toward the east into the coral sea what i want viewers to focus on however is what could happen to the steering of these lows depending on where they are in relation to this developing ridge once it starts to make a comeback by day five if there is still any lingering area of low pressure very close to the Queensland coastline, then it's likely going to get captured by the ridge to the south as it builds back. If it does get captured, it will have the tendency to push any storm back toward the west. However, if any cyclones have deviated much more toward the east, closer toward the Solomon Islands or New Caledonia, it is likely to still feel the influences of troughing out across the southern Pacific, which would induce more of a continuous track toward the southeast or east. So there are still two varying tracks that are possible with regards to any potential development near Queensland. But one positive so far in the guidance is that so far they've at least been somewhat consistent with the idea that any Kimberley Coast low is going to have the tendency to slide west-southwest throughout the forecast period. So all of the model graphics that we have viewed so far are from the GFS. Now this is the surface depiction from the European ECMWF model, and I do believe that the European has a more accurate handle on the overall weather pattern out across the Gulf and Cape York Peninsula. So as we go deeper into the forecast period, as we work our way into 36 and 48 hours, the surface low starts to move into the southern Gulf, but it's still very disorganized and not overly strong. So compared to yesterday, the chances for this system making it to Category 1 intensity before reaching the peninsula seem to have decreased. It's probably somewhere between 40 or 50 percent, but despite classification, the impacts along this area will be relatively the same and as it starts to cross the peninsula it may become somewhat more disorganized and it's also going to be crossing some of the higher terrain with the mountains in place along the coastline but we may start to see some redevelopment and it could be more in the form of a secondary low nonetheless as we go into day four and day five this is going to be the primary area to watch and it's likely going to develop into a cyclone as the models are all picking up on favorable upper level atmospheric conditions for that to occur and what will happen with the steering currents thereafter? Well, we saw the two main scenarios as depicted by the GFS. Either one is almost equally as likely this far out. Anything beyond day five is a lot of speculation in terms of cyclone forecasting. And also, as we look over toward Western Australia for a second, it is more northerly with that surface low formation. And as we said earlier, if the low develops off the coastline, then obviously that is going to greatly increase the chances for cyclone development. Just for model comparison purposes, this is the Canadian CMC model, valid day four. You can see the main surface low well to the east of Cairns. By day five, it is continuing to strengthen into a robust tropical cyclone. And by day seven, we also see the developing tropical cyclone. And based on this model depiction, it would develop well to the north of Port Hedland. But again, we're not really quite buying that solution. We think it's going to be a little closer to the coastline and more in agreement with the GFS and ECMWF solutions. This is a look at the UK Met model, 24 hours out, and you can see nothing much happening, but as we go into day two, the UK Met is still a little aggressive with development in the southern Gulf. As we go into day three and day four, it starts to lose that surface reflection as it gets torn up by topography as it continues to cross the peninsula. However, as it starts to move into the Coral Sea by day five, day six, you can see that the surface pressure falls are continuing down to 996. 
And also remember that when it comes to these global models, a lot of times they do not fully resolve the true intensity of these cyclones. So based on this depiction, we would likely be dealing with a cyclone stronger than 996 HPA. And you can also see that the model is also trying to sniff out some of the surface load development near the Kimberley. Finally, we're going to look beyond the day 8 period because all we looked at in terms of the model so far were the 5 to 8 day forecast. And we did show the European earlier, but it was not beyond 192 hours. And you really have to take all of these models beyond day 5 with a grain of salt, but especially by day 8 and day 9 and 10, you really need to watch what you're looking at. But the European, for example, it is one of the more accurate medium range models. This is the only reason why we're showing this. But anyway, as we go into day 9, it shows the Coral Sea tropical cyclone simply meandering out there as the steering currents would break down potentially. And the significant tropical cyclone being progged is near the Gascoigne region. And as we take a look at the ECMWF ensemble mean, which is an average of the 51 ECMWF model members, and what this tells us is that our tropical cyclone near Western Australia can be almost anywhere within this region. And there is even more uncertainty with regards to any surface load development or continuing developments in the Coral Sea. So these are going to be the two main areas to watch as we go throughout the next 5 to 10 days. And there is still a lot to be figured out. But that's all for now. Thanks for tuning in. Please continue to stop by at 28storms.com cyclone for more updates.